Hey guys, welcome back. So Windows 10 has been out for about five years now and it really does have some cool features under the hood which not necessarily everybody knows. So in this video today, let me share with you five cool things that you can do with your Windows 10 computer and to also let you know that Windows 7 is actually going to be end of life on the 14th of January 2020, which is only a few weeks from now. So I'm guessing lots of people are going to be upgrading to Windows 10. So I'm hoping at least some of these tips may be useful to them. So with all of that being said, let's jump right into it. So the first cool thing we can do with Windows 10 is to enable automatic management of our storage, or we could say automatic housekeeping. Now this feature is actually called Storage Sense, and by default, it's not enabled. Now to enable that, if you go to the Start button, let's go to Settings, let's click on that. Let's now go to System, and here we're looking for Storage. And here we can just confirm that Storage Sense is disabled by default. Let's now turn that on. Let's click on configure. And firstly, we can just configure when does storage sense actually run. The default option is to run whenever your drive runs low on space. But if you click on that, you can actually say I want to run this option every day, every week or every month. But for now, let's just leave it on whenever you have low free disk space. And then the first option we have is to automatically delete any temporary files that your applications are not using. So you don't have to go and find any temporary files manually yourself because this option is enabled. This will do that for you automatically giving you back that free disk space. You also have the option here to manage your recycle bin. So as we know on Windows, anytime you delete a file, it actually moves that to your recycle bin. Then it's up to you to go ahead and right click and empty that whenever you feel like it. But with this option enabled, this will actually delete any files in there that are older than 30 days, but you can also reduce that down to one day or 14 days or even up to 60 days. So it really does give you that control on when these files will be deleted from your recycle bin. Let's just leave it at 30 days. You also have a great option, which is to manage the files in your downloads folder. As you know, on Windows, anytime you download anything from your browser or from anywhere else, the default location it goes to is actually your downloads folder which we can see here. Now over time, this can build up depending on how actively you are downloading things on your computer. So once again, having this option enabled, you could say, for example, anything older than 60 days, just delete that for me. So, and the very last option is only applicable if you've ever done an in-place upgrade of your Windows operating system. So if you upgraded from Windows 8 to Windows 10 or from Windows 7 to Windows 10, you can actually click on this option and this will then go ahead and delete any of the files from your previous operating system. So we can see that Storage Sense does give you that automated control of the maintenance of your hard drives. And if you run all of this now, let's click on Clean Now. Give that a second and that should now go ahead and delete all of the files that match this criteria here. The next cool thing we can do in Windows is to enable the nightlight feature. Now in recent years, evidence has appeared that exposure to blue light can cause eye fatigue and a whole range of health issues. So whether you're looking at your phone in your bed or you're looking at your iPad, or maybe you're just staring at the computer screen for too long, but all of these can prevent you sleeping and it's actually what causes your eyes to hurt. Now, fortunately, the big names in the tech world have started to take notice of this problem. As you notice with most of the modern smartphones from your iPhones to your Android phones, they will have some kind of night mode feature which actually reduces that blue light. Now to do this in Windows, if you just do a right click on the desktop and select display settings, right at the top here you can see we have the option to enable blue light. Now if I turn this on, this will now change the colors displayed on the screen into warmer versions of themselves. In other words, we are now partially removing that blue light. You can also tweak the settings in here and you can change how much of the blue light is removed. So the more you go to the right, the more warmer the colors will be and the less blue light you have and opposite on the left. You can also get this to happen automatically via schedule. So you can go from your sunset to your sunrise. Or you can actually pick the hours yourself. So automatically turn on night light at, let's say, for example, at 10 o'clock at night time and turn it off at 6 a.m. in the morning. So again, you have that complete control on how you want to manage these night light settings. So it really is a great feature that's automatically built into Windows. The next cool thing we can do in Windows is to actually manage the windows by using various mouse gestures. For example, if you click and hold on an active window and then just shake your mouse, we can see that then minimizes all the other windows except the current active one. And if you do the same process again, that then reverses the actions and then brings these windows back. You can also snap the windows. So for example, if I click and hold here and drag up, if I let go now, we can see that then makes this full screen. Let's try that again with another window. Again, let's click here, go to the top, let go, and then that makes it full screen. Similarly, if you click and drag to the left, this then resizes the window to exactly half of your screen size. And if you then click on another window, 
you now have two equal size windows taking up exactly half of your screen for each window. So it's a great way to improve your productivity. So on this side, you could maybe be doing your work, maybe typing up a document. On this side, you could be maybe you know browsing the web or watching some YouTube videos. Similarly, if you click and go to the bottom left and then let go, this then does a perfect quarter of your screen size for this active window. So again, I can click on another window up here Okay, so we now have two quarter windows and a full size window. So here I could be typing up document. This is a typing test. Down here I'm looking at some pictures and over here I'm browsing the web. So again, it really is a great way to increase the productivity on your computer. And if you don't like using the mouse, if you're more of a power user, you can also do that by using the Windows key. So if I press the Windows key and left, we can see that then snaps to the left. If I press the Windows key and up, we can see that then goes to the top left. If I press the Windows key and down, if I press the Windows key down again, that then goes to the bottom left. So again, you can do all of this stuff just by using the Windows key and the arrows. The next cool feature we have is System Restore. And I'll say this is kind of like a time machine that will allow you to undo any of the system changes on your device that, that may be causing you problems. So let's say for example, you install you know, a big Windows update or you install a program and it ends up crashing your computer. Well, this will be an ideal time to use a System Restore point to go back to a previous point where your computer was actually healthy. Now to create a System Restore point, if you go to the Start button, Button. Let's go to settings and in here let's search for restore and we can see here we have the option to create a restore point. Let's click on that and we can see on my computer the protection is set to off. So let's click on configure. Let's click on turn on system protection. And let's allocate about 5% of my drive for system restore. Let's click on apply and click on OK. Okay, so now that system protection is enabled, we now want to create a custom restore point, which means if anything happens to my computer, I can always go back to this point where we currently are right now. So let's click on create. Let's just give that a name so I can say you know, everything great. And if you're about to make a big change, you can actually make a note here like pre-installing new update. So you know if there's any problems, you can always go back to this particular restore point. Let's click on create and we get the message that the restore point was created successfully. Let's click on close. And if you want to use that restore point, we can click on system restore, click on next, and we can see here we've got the manual restore point that we created. So anything happens to my computer, I could always go back to this particular restore point. So I do think this is a great feature which could save your neck if you do end up having a critical problem on your computer. The last cool thing we can do on Windows 10, which I would say is probably a bit more of an advanced feature, is to enable virtual desktops. Now, virtual desktops, as the name implies, allows you to create virtual desk spaces or virtual workspaces for you to organize and manage your stuff. For example, you could have one virtual desktop where you're doing your work or your productivity stuff, and you can have a separate one for your entertainment or for your leisure activities. Now, to create a virtual desktop, you can click on the task view here. And we can see these are the current active windows that I have. And we have a feature at the top here saying new desktop. Let's click on that. We can now see we have a desktop two and a desktop one. If I go to desktop two, we can see I have no applications open. If I go back to the task view, go back to desktop one, and we can see here I've got a couple of things open like a Word document, uh, the File Explorer window, and also Chrome. Now, if I want to move something to a second desktop, let's go back to the task view. Now I can say I want to move Chrome because I'm going to be using that for games or something. I can drag that into desktop two. Okay, so now we have desktop one with just two things open. And if I go back to the task view, we can see desktop two is just for the browsers. So this way you can separate out your work and maybe your other activities, which would hopefully give you increased productivity. You can also use a shortcut, which is Well, that's all for this video, guys. Many thanks for watching. I do hope you found at least some of those tips useful. If you did, please do give this video a like. If you want to see more of this kind of content, then do think about subscribing. Also, leave me a comment below and let me know your favorite tips for Windows 10. And I'll hopefully catch up with you guys real soon. Thanks.